Hello and good day, good day, and it's great to see you back on the channel. Northworthy sagas and stories. I am as forever your host, Dwagi, the son of Magnar. And yes, I am a Viking. I'm a warrior. I'm a poet and a teller of folk tales. And I'm here with my very good Viking friend. Egil Thorson, warrior, trader, merchant, storyteller, runecaster. Oh yes, and we have to talk about rune casting one day. Oh yeah. So I'm sure there's many people who never heard of it. But today you may be saying, well what are you doing today, Braggy and Eggle? Well, we're all standing outside of a nice bush, blackberry bush. And we thought, let's talk about foraging for a few minutes. How many of you, I wonder, when you were children, used to go scrumping, nicking apples off the tree? I know I did. Oh, I did, yeah. Got on too uh, far, you asked camera. <laughs> now, why do people do it? Well, prior to farms and things like that, this is how you supplied. Now, Sue Bragg has got a spare. Maybe one in ten, maybe one in three hunts, you'd get something to eat. Meanwhile, the women and the children, which is still happening in parts of Africa today, would go foraging. They'd pick berries. In this case, we've got blackberries. Very nice. Mm. Apples. The apples in those days, of course, would be different from what we have today. Very small, uh, about that size, and you eat the whole thing. Oh. Uh, you've got the usual brambles, as I say. You've got blackberries, you have raspberries. Gooseberries. Gooseberries. You've also got uh, black currants. Yes. And elderflower. Oh. And elderflower. Elderberries? Yeah. Because also, excuse me, I've got you can make wine out of almost yes, everything. Yes, I was going to mention wine. And it's a useful thing to make because, not because they're alcoholic, it's because it's the only safe liquid to drink, really. Water and milk, forget it, unless you boil it or you make it into cheese. In other words, you alter, you boil out any nastiness that's in it. But they have the added advantage, I've got a good, good bunch here. We have, yes. Um, is that they didn't have insecticide to spray on things. Now, there is a tradition in English, in England, about blackberries. You write until about mid-September, early October, when it says the devil urinates on it. And if you eat one, it could look like this, late on in the period, you take it and it's a very nasty taste to it. There's just no reason to show do it. Oh, so you foraging, <laughs> and it's not only just berries. Many things today we consider weeds or chestnut. Yeah, are considered uh, a delicacy. Well, of course so. Uh, many of them I would like to try. And you've got to know your stuff before you do this. The certain leaves of trees, certain plants, are very tasty. Uh, hawthorn leaves. Yes. It's known as bread and cheese in this country. Uh, you can use that, but you have to know your stuff to do it. Well, what's one of the most commonest things you can find and eat? The nettle. Of course. Now, there is, um, I was told, whether this is true or not, I don't know, that the Romans would plant nettles on the side of the road. Yes, so, I've heard this. So at the end of the day, they got fresh greens to eat. Is that an urban myth? I don't know, but you do find an awful lot of nettles. Well, you so do. It's quite possible. And the they are they are tasty. Yeah. And you could also make very good string out of nettles. Mm. Um, Multi-use. For those that are smokers and lunch, you can smoke it. As well, well, I suppose so. You, it out. you make tea with it and all sorts. Yes, it makes a nice tea. It makes mm. a nice, um, nice soup. I've never eaten nettles. I have to be honest. I have. Um, I, I like to get them over the fire, and you singe the leaves. And it kind of crisps up and burns the stings mm. off. That's quite nice. There you go. But when we get a fire and we can find some fresh nettle, perhaps we might make something. Um, I'll let you pick them. Yeah, I'll <laughs> pick them. Well, the thing about a nettle, if you put your hand at the bottom and drag your hand up, it won't sting you. You only get stung if you put your hand down because the, the barbs are, are pointing upwards. Well, well, I'll let you demonstrate. So you can, you can demonstrate. You, can get, you get your hand on the bottom of the nettle and you go straight up, it won't sting you. We've also got dead nettles, aren't there, with the flowers at the top? Yes. So I tried that once and got stung. Anyway, but, so... You know, any, any hedgerow is, is a valuable source of food. Well, also, further up your garden, I notice you've got rose hips. Yes, we do have rose so hips. So you can make rose hip syrup, which was a standby. In fact, it's still a standby today in certain areas. It is. You can buy it. Yeah. 
rose hip syrup is supposed to be good for you. Uh, again, I've never eaten it, but that's... It'd be great to get an expert on dark aged food to come on the channel and talk about this a bit more. Well, I do have a friend who is a master herbalist. She just, uh, she's done the yes, courses. Yes, that's definitely the kind of way you want to go, become but a layman. Uh, unfortunately, she lives in Liverpool. All right, Max, uh, she lives in Liverpool. And I'm trying to get her to come over, her and her daughter. Difficult because she has a wheelchair. Well, that's understandable. But anyway, so foraging. I mean, it's second nature to human beings. I mean, in the Neolithic period, Stone Age, it was a standard thing. You went and foraged, you foraged for your family. Things like nuts, hazelnuts. Oh, yes. In some the of nuts. the islands outside in Scotland, in that area, there's massive piles of hazelnut shells. And what they would do, they would roast them. Uh, makes them easy, more digestible. Yes. Um, then you find fish bones in various areas. And you ate whatever you could find, basically. You foraged. I mean, all you could find berries, you ate berries. And of course, then we get the thing where, as you know, they would air dry the meat and flavour it. Oh, and yes. Uh, Smoke the meat, failed fail tradition. Yeah, you've got Biltong, or uh, was it jerky? Well, that's, that's South African jerky. Mm. You get jerky, which is jolly nice. But we don't think about the dark age enough and dried meat. Mm. They did have a lot of dried meat. You would have hung it up in your long house, and uh, the smoke from the fire would have cured it. Well, the Native Americans do it as well, don't they? They do, yes. Uh, but I think it's very common throughout the world in, in old culture. Yeah, I think it's, it works. You can keep the meat indefinitely as long as you keep it dry. And this is sometimes the way I wear up. I'll go to a wear up with the bare minimum stuff, uh, and I'll just eat from the hedgerows. Mm. And I'll go and collect berries. I'll, I can go and collect enough uh, food to make a stew. I can river fen go and catch rabbits. Yeah. We'll do that. And you can have a nice rabbit stew. Poor old bunny. We've got apples, haven't we? Well, yes. Now, we do have hazel trees down the garden, so perhaps later on in the year we can. In, when it's more autumny, we mm. can talk about that. But this is just a you know impromptu uh, last minute idea video. Whilst we were eating some uh, nice blackberries, we thought, oh, we could talk about this on camera. Mm -hmm. This is often the way content is made. So I, I, I do hope you thoroughly enjoyed this short video. And yeah. if you have any more ideas like this we could do, then please leave it in a comment. And don't forget to go and like the video. And if you're new to the channel, then please go and subscribe click on the notification bell and by doing that you'll be notified when we publish which is currently four times a week yeah. so for me Braggy it is a goodbye and from Egil ta da ta da oh yeah blackberries are lovely I like oh, blackberries nice.